Lord, we give you perfect peace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Job 23, 12. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. This was Job talking. No, Job, you, even if you are not a believer, if you are not a church person, you will know Job. Hallelujah. I remember growing up, my, if my dad is talking, you will be like, What's, what, what, what has happened to you? The Job here, you, you've not even faced what happened about Job. Has. So I grew up hearing about Job. Hallelujah. Even before I start going to proper student church. So Job is a character, a, a person in the Bible that we, we know about. So Job was saying here in verse 12 of 23, he said, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth. So this is a making reference to the word of God. And what caught my attention here is that he said, I have treasured. Amen. I have treasured. Do you know the meaning of treasured? When you so, when, whatever you treasure, you just don't, you, you don't leave. It's like when you have a gold. Some of us know of a parent that have gold. They have this, is it tricked a box or something? You can't just find it. And they don't even wear it every Sunday. <laughs> it's on a special occasion. What you treasure is not everywhere. And how we know that you treasure is that where you place it. Amen. Amen. Where you place it. There are some spoons in our house when we are growing up. You, every, you can't use it. Amen. Because it's like a treasured spoon. Amen. So when, and they don't keep it where every other cutlery is at. They put it in a special place. So this is the word of God. Job said, I treasure the word of God. Is it first such have come to encourage us? Treasure the word of God. And how we know that you treasure this word of God? Where is the word of God in you? Is it in your heart? Whatever you treasure, you put in your heart. Amen. You put in your heart. The psalmist says, Psalm 119, I speak near 191 of I say, Your word have I hide in my heart. The word of God must be. Because see, whatever you don't keep in your heart, when the days of pain, and even the days of comfort comes, you might not have something to help. Amen. He said, Your word have I treasured. I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. I was thinking this morning, what are the importance of the word of God? What does the word do for us? See, in the days of comfort, and even in the days of battle, what it helps is how much of the word of God that is in you. Amen. How much of the word of God? Sometimes people think that it's you only need the word of God when you are going through challenges. No, it's more than that. Even when you are receiving comfort. Hallelujah. When you are receiving comfort. Because sometimes it's the word that is in you that will say to you, hmm, you are sleeping too much, you now you don't need your baby. Say, hey, don't come. This scripture will just keep coming into your heart. But if you don't have the words inside of you, you will, before you, you have, you have, you have left faith. Amen. You have left faith. As the word comes today, let it have, treasure it, and place it in your heart. Put it in your heart. Create a, if you can create a space, do it. Because you will need it now or later. Amen. The word of God never go to waste. Thank God for the word of God. And this is what Job was telling us. He said, I treasured his words. And I thought that was why he was able to go through all the pains and trials. I pray that as the word comes again today, it will bad faith in your heart. It will, it will make you a better person. I know it's family life series, but see, 
in life, we pick here, we pick there to make us a better person. Sometimes people will have to, people will always say you are special. No, it's what I've had, it's what I've read, it's what I've lived into that make me who I am today. Amen. There's power in the world. And what you keep listening to before you know you become it. Amen. You become it. Let the word come into your heart. Treasure it. Treasure this season that God has prepared his servants for me. For me to hear, even if it's a word. Because I tell you, the word you receive today might be what you need in the next 20, 50 years of your life. I pray the word will profit us this morning in Jesus' joy. In Jesus' name. With Jesus' joy, let's welcome Pastor for the ministration. Oh, 
pessoa do mundo. form a level. This has been a lifestyle. So, and I knew she was shocked that I insisted on using the fork. I finished the food, even using the wire cut that people are using spoon. Then he brought my image, memory down to when I was young too, in a place called Jebadikoke Je <laughs> okay, Je Street in Abre, where one of my sister, auntie, came to visit us. Her name is Auntie Inka, came to visit us. And it's time for serving her to eat too. And it was swallowed. And she asked for fork. Then when she asked for fork, in my mind I was wondering, everybody is using hands. You are using what? Fork. Then I began to query, why is she using fork? Then probably I exposed her because she was an air hostess in those days, using you no know, drive, you no, know, you know, those kind of exposure that made her not to use hands again. Everything has to be with cutlery. Then, juxtaposing my own experience with Antinka and my own experience after I've grown up, now I discover that there are a lot of things that informs our belief system. A lot inform our belief system. So you that are sitting down right now, it's not only Bible that is in your head. <laughs> it's not. Every decision you make right now, there are various factors that influence it. The only job of a pastor is to make sure that we superimpose scriptures over those thoughts, especially when those thoughts are wrong. Are you with me? The culture you live in influences your thought. Who told you that when somebody wears trousers and shirt, you must talk him? You find the Bible verse to confuse, to, confuse, to convince me. It's not a biblical issue, it's a cultural issue. So that will not determine whether you make your own or not. Come on now. I'm trying to tell you that when we now bring marriage on the table as a form of discussion, you must understand that every decision you make is as a result of somebody or multiple form of influence. One of them could be ethical. What the environment says is right. Yeah, what the environment says is right. There's no biblical Back, uh, what they call it, back off to tell you that when you come to church, everybody must see that the Christian must stand. <laughs> so, so if I tell you that I want to sit down, 
to preach like Pastor Adeboye. To some of you, we think it's a standard car. Ah, no, it's not spiritual. You must respect the audience. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to create an atmosphere to probe why you think the way you think. So, let's see who help you. Personal experience. As you have grown in life, like what that young lady saw, everything she saw at home is everybody using spoon to eat swallow. So it has become a personal experience, and through that, you can use it to judge everybody's experience. So because you are used to it, does not mean you are right. The fact that you are used to it does not mean others are wrong. Because it's a personal experience. What is the communicating? Cultural experience. Also affect the way you think. I tell you, it affects the way you think. Cultural influences is what we make an African artist to be wearing black jacket inside summer. <laughs> because <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? When they create a suit, black um gray, is for weather. <laughs> Time has a cultural influence. So now if you now import it and make you feel like a big boy, if you're in Africa, then you understand that. And there are places we've been to, our friends have been to in the body of Christ, that if you don't wear suit with tie, you are not a pastor. In fact, some they will not allow you to preach. But yeah, cultural influence. That's right. Uh, and there's also family background too. The way daddy and mommy have been doing it. it. Might not be wrong. I did notice, let me say this. Uh, uh, this is discovery. I did notice that if you like your mom, if you as a man like your mom very well, and you are so used to your mom, there is a tendency that the person you marry will look like your mom. Including Anastasia. <laughs> it does include that stuff. Because that's what you're used to in your subconscious mind that be registered. When when you look like this, it must be right. I'm just telling you that those are influences that shape the way we think. But when we not come to church, we have to understand that the job of the pastor is to bring all of those together and make sure that they bow their knees to the scripture. Mm -hmm. If they contract the scripture, it will not please God and they can shame you. And that's the job of a pastor. So all I've just said is an introduction to tell you that what thought is in your mind as far as marital destiny is concerned. And whatever thought is it is in your mind, is it going to comply with that of the scripture? And you see track with Matthew chapter 19. <laughs> Told totally you you're going to get blessed. Let me just quickly. Did you list all those points that I gave you? I just gave you about six points now. Let me just get ethical view, personal, personal view, view, yeah, or cultural, 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 cultural family, family or background, then experiential view. Okay. And then please add this one too, it's very important, the emotional view, because that's what is winning the world today. I do things the way I feel it. Emotional view. I do things the way I feel it. That's a terrible thing that is going on in the world system we are today. Everybody making decisions based on their feelings. Why did you do this? I feel this right. Just feel it. Just feel it. But your feeling is not enough to drive your destiny. Yeah, your feeling is not enough to drive your destiny. Your feeling cannot run in your life. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 11. Let's read this together. Please open to it. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 3, 22, verse 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You made all things beautiful. Yeah. Matthew chapter 19. If you're there, say amen. 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 Verses 3 to 11. Do you know you're afraid? I'm looking at the pen that you're using to write. <laughs> you relax, sir. I love you. <laughs> Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 11. Are you there now? Now, since some Pharisees came and tried to trap Jesus with this question, should a man allow to divorce his wife just for what? Any reason. 
Are you still with me? Verse 4, haven't you read the scripture? Jesus replied, they record, they, they, rec they record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and joins his wife, and the two are united into one. But since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Then why, they said, why did Moses say to the Lord that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away? They asked. But say, Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard heart. But it was not what God originally intended. And I tell you, whosoever divorces his wife or marries or someone else committed adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. What about unless your husband has been unfaithful? That's my own question. Jesus disciples said to him, if this is the case, Pastor, it's better not to marry. Not everyone can accept this, Jesus said. Only those whom God has. Some are born as Enoch, some have been made Enoch by others, and some choose not to marry for the sake of the kingdom. Let anyone accept this who can. Come on, that's a good word. Jesus just, you know, was not married. Please look up. Jesus wasn't married. So, the Jewish prayer they have BS ministry and he did not intend to marry. But, under normal circumstances, Jesus might have not gotten to a place, probably the synagogue, and he said, the title of the message today is how to marry or to keep your wife. But sometimes questions help him, you know, to enter into a terrain and explore some levels of wisdom that would have helped us. Because if the Pharisees didn't ask him a question like this, Jesus wouldn't have given a reply like this. And I'm telling you, you can read any other verses of the Bible that has to do with marital issue. If you do not confirm it with this matter chapter 19, you will lead yourself into hell. Are you with me? If you have read with me, the most word that would have come or jump out of the scripture to you would have been the word divorce. But I can tell you, according to these verses that Jesus, you know, gave us responses to these Pharisees, every framework of marital issues is in there. What it means to be single is in there. What it means to be married is in there. What it means to be divorced is in there. What it means to remarry is in there. Even separation is in there. So the question you might want to ask me today, which one should I have? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> which one should I have? On the long run, I will use this meeting to talk a little bit more to the singles. A little bit more to the singles. But the question before us today is that you are a young boy, a fine boy, found a girl, whether she's very scarf like my wife in those days or not, you know, and you just say, hey, hey, what's up? So you look like your face is familiar. That introduction hmm, will cost you the next 50 years. <laughs> your face is familiar. You just did that introduction. If she says yes, it is familiar. You just enter into what I call a lifetime sentence. <laughs> so, before you say your face is familiar, make sure you shake the face very well. <laughs> Are you tracking with me? What I'm going to tell to you is that when Jesus was trying to deal with these Pharisees, he said, anytime you have marital issue, the first thought pattern is no divorce. That's not where he began from. He said, because from the beginning, male and female made them both. That statement is so simple. Because if you say from the beginning, male and female made them, made them both. What does it mean? What simply means is that you can't marry anybody. When he made them, he made male and a female for a male. Are you with me? You can't marry everybody. The father is a skeleton, is in trust, and does not make him male and female. 
What makes them male and female is that that male is for that female, that female is for that male. Can I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that there are two major causes. I'm asking you, can you handle this? The one you are in or you are about to enter into, I'm asking you, can you handle it? The two major, in fact, it's only one cause, but let me add, make it two for simplicity. There are two major causes that causes all the challenges we face in marriage. All, not some. And I know some of you who have listened to many messages, and you're right. I am not an, I am not an expert in marital stuff, and I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I, I don't want to be. Because I've discovered that the time you waste on counseling, some people, if they are spiritual, you will not waste that time. Because you can spend two hours to cancel somebody to end up doing what you can say them in case. To let you know that. Uh, <laughs> look, you can tie seven keys to get it the right woman. Okay? Then, and they will see, take the seven keys in their hands, see the woman, they will see get it wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you. I'm telling you that's why that, that guy didn't come into that job. He came into maturity. Because that hurts better. Because when you, when, oh, he's Jesus Christ. Don't let me jump in now. Are you still with me? Yes. Two major causes, or root cause, of marital issues. Two major. Any other information you get from that is just to expand on these two major factors. Number one is wrong choice. Number two is hard hearts. Wrong choice. Hard Heart. When you we've we've, we've cancelled a bit, we cancel a bit. When you see somebody down and you tell them what is wrong with your marriage is not working, and there's no extreme cases like immorality. Even in the midst of morality, some people still continue. But let's take that as Jesus confirms as a exceptional case. When you sit them down and you say, Why don't you want to do it again? Why are you fighting? If you look closely to it, uh, one of the reasons is poor communication. It's because it shows the right person. It's a, a wood communicate with wood. Huh? A stone does not communicate with wood. If there is one communication, it's because <laughs> you don't you understand what I'm saying. You share, it's, it's not communication can be developed if the art is right. If the choice is right, communication can be developed. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That's why now they say, okay, be a friend to somebody because so that when you get married, please, you will be a friend. Let me tell you something. All of those ones, if your heart is wrong and you marry somebody, anybody can form friendship until you collect the ring. Uh, we'll be dead. Let me clean my face. This way. Because we have cancer. And we have cancer, and we are, we are, we are, we are seeing we are seeing good women in the hand of rubbish guys. And we are seeing guys that the only reason they married her is because she's beautiful. And we're seeing, what would you see? Let's go a little bit deep. Are you still with me? If you have the Holy Spirit, According to what Jesus said, he said to them, he said, he said, why can't we divorce? He said to them, he said, from the beginning, God did not intend divorce. He said, why? Because male and female made it them. And because he made every woman for a man, he said, as a result of that, I expect you guys, you know, to leave your father and mother join together. And that joining that is God that made it together, which is the right choice. He said, let no man separate it. Are you with me? And then now further to probe him, he said, okay, why did Moses allow us to go ahead to begin to do this thing? He said, the reason he did it is because of your heart. Is what? Heart. So the two basic root cause of any marital issue is to deal with the choice or to deal with the heart. And my mom, the blessed mom, we always, blessed mom, we always mention a proverb in Yoruba land. He said, the one that is not good, this prayers. The one that is good, too. This prayers. And I'll stop that place. Are you striking with me? Me too. Me too. Hallelujah. Amen. I met a lady. She said, just emotional view, parental view, 
background view, even professional view. They are both professionals. They said they should get married. Said the only thing they say no is God's will, which is in our hearts. The day of engagement, everybody was dancing outside. Rice is ready. She was inside with clothes, doing makeup. And she said to me, I feel like packing my load and just escaping. But there's nobody that wants to hear that. If you tell that they are you want to escape. <laughs> it's, only, it's only genuine women, not men. Genuine women, not men. I don't trust men on that day. <laughs> don't they? He, uh, they, they go, he go with not allow. But women, they will say, oh, they love her. Ah, no, you have to be happy. You know? But there's nobody to tell that I want to run away. And now, the five years down the line, they brought a case like that for me as counselor. And now telling me that PT, what do you advise? Say it can work. If the choice is wrong, they have to be weak. Me, I won't give you this thing according to key point though. I will give you this according to the biblical pattern. If you want this thing to last, get the choice right. If the choice is not right, it will weaken your heart. You know the reason why people find it easy to divorce? It's because the how God is open when they enter. If you choose right, divorce will not be the ultimate. If, I, if, if it ends up being a mistake, the mistake will be this. But these days now, everybody has many reasons why they want to come into it. Because they know that if we choose wrong, we can come out easily. That's why they want to choose wrong, because we know we can come out easily. We know that it doesn't work, we can just get out. But if the front door, the back, the front door is you no, know, the back door is closed, and you come into the front door into marriage, and you know you can't come out, you will choose well. Mm. You will choose well. You will choose well. You will choose well. You will choose well. And I plead in the name of Jesus Christ. For some of us that are still singles and trust singles, choose well. Choose well because it will help a lot with your heart. Hallelujah. I will pray the same thing for our children. Amen. Just use way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. I will come back. So again, let's get the note. Two major root causes of what Marita Shalem is. Number one is what? Okay. And number two is what? Now, let me dwell a little bit on this ad hat. Then I will come back to choice. And you know why I want to leave you with this wrong guy? Because most of us here are married. And if you're married, even including those that just got married, let's go for them. They're looking kinky. <laughs> There's no marriage without an issue. I traveled two years, came back. I didn't know my wife was born to a little bit of some stuff in the last few months, last phase of the last phase of the placement. I didn't know. So I just came back and I was just thinking, oh Lord, what is next? You know. And just a simple discussion. And boom, this argument. It took time for me to know that it wasn't that argument that the whole issue of that day that caused the argument. It was three, four months ago, this thing. But let me tell you, this one we are smiling today. If the art is not right, eh, it's another thing you'll be here. Are you with me? Yes. And, that's it. and it happened on the wedding day. And you know I still preach well. Yeah? yeah? To let you know the anointing to my people is different from the one to manage the house. The one for the pulpit is the gift of the spirit. The one for the house is the heart. Mm. They are two different things. I still preach well powerfully. You didn't even know whether I prayed that day or not. Are you with me? Heart. You know what it means to have a hard heart? It's like an engine without oil. No lubrication. As in the heart, there is dry. I'm give, let me give you the Greek word so that you can know that I need my understanding. But to pronounce the Greek word is even difficult to show you there is heart. Eh? <laughs> that heart means sclerocardio. <laughs> Which means it's hard because it's dry. It means to lack moisture or fabricant. You know, heart, heart which lacks the oil of the Holy Spirit. Hence, implies rebellion. Something refusing to be receptive to the working of it. Terrible thing. To have a hard heart. To have a hard heart. I 
And it's so simple for you. That has discernment to know somebody that has a heart at. For instance, now, if you struggle to change over a repeated complaint, even as a complaint, a complaint, and they begin to get feedback from customers that we don't like this, we don't like this. If you keep that product on market, or in market, you might lose that complaint. So in marriage, if you say, oh yes, uh, we married, this is how I am, this is how you married me, you cannot, oh, you, you, there's no bad vibe. <laughs> the heart is hard, is hard. There is not the one, there is nothing on this side of the world that does not respond to change. It's only God that is the same as today and forever. Including your cooking. That's the that one. We can't be looking at this and bad money. It was a bit of a British. And then, Jesus Christ on that. Let's do some cheese. Let's just try it. Even if we can't swallow it, let's just try it. Everything can like, No, 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 that. Oh, this is how I am. This is, come on. Come on, your heart, your heart is hard. Your heart is hard. Your heart is hard. And this is how we do it. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, it's the husband that is taking care of the wife. Oh. So I can do it. Look, it, that was the, the generation of daddies and mommy. In this generation, it's a teamwork. Yeah. What? I cannot afford to be hard. Afford to be hard. And this is Charlie. When the heart is hard, it's Charlie when it is probably one part, there is no way it will not affect the other. True. Because when you are two, you work in two. But when you become one, there is nothing that happens to one party that does not automatically affect the other party. One of the things that scares me, are you still with me? Yes. One of the things that scares me most when it comes to this ad part is when you form a party in marriage who have entered into a zone of sin without a desire for repentance and shame. You feel. In that, that's why Jesus put a clause. And let me say to this one, because put a clause, and they said, you can leave your father and mother, especially when a case where the woman commits immorality or adultery. Because most of the other things is so easy to let go. But for a woman or a marriage to go and eat outside the same food you are cooking at home is a sign that of selfishness and greediness, and it's so difficult to get him from it. And Jesus said, I give that self. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Give that self. And I've done few cancelings. I've done few cancelings. Ah! It's so difficult to let people go, or to let people stay when they should morality and enters into it. Why are you not smiling? Because I mentioned we've got to be careful. Oh, Jesus is appreciated. Jesus is appreciated. The work of the pastor is tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. So, I might go later in the course of the series to talk to us more in depth about this art and how to keep our heart pure before God. Okay? Come on, okay? Yes, Let me give you this scripture, Proverbs 4.23. You know it very, very well. Proverbs 4.23. Get your heart with all diligence, for out of it, what? Flows. Let me read it to you in, um, let me read it to you in um, New Living Translation. It said, guide your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guide it above all else. Another version says, this is good news for the child. They said, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Wow. Are you with me? Wow. Be careful how what how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Glory to God. Amen. Now to the singles. Don't forget, I'm building on two cases. I'm telling you about the importance of choosing right and the importance of what. Having the right heart. One of the questions that is so common in the body of Christ 
which if I asked to any person that they said they would say they would ask they said, is it that uh, when it comes to marriage, is it uh, how do they put it now? Do you have a specific brother you must marry or a specific sister you must marry? Uh, so if his name is James, if you didn't marry James, ah, <laughs> you married Judah, you could not be a James. Ah, <laughs> you, you chose it wrong. And there are many ways by which we've already defined. Some will say yes with the explanation. Some will say no with the explanation. Some will give an explanation. I think I have somebody making an explanation. But, but let me just tell you how it works. When Jesus said, he said, male and female created in them. Listen to carefully to what he said. He is saying that there are some qualities and virtues. That if it is not in that person that you are marrying, that you should not do it. That's, that's just what it means. It's not necessarily male and female as to start sure that there's not. It's talking about the content of their the desire, the passion, you know, and the qualities of life. For instance, if you're a pastor, you can't marry just any sister because they require the partner. Listen to me. Pastor's wife are specially built because pastors are public products. You, that you have not said yes to brother. And the brother is talking to another sister. You say, Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? I want to know. Share, give me your phone. You are cheating on me. He has, he has not even proposed. You are already saying he's cheating on me. You can't marry a pastor. You cannot marry a pastor. Because if you are a pastor's wife, <laughs> somebody called me 10 p.m. I said, Florence, don't you know that? <laughs> don't you know I'm a married woman? Married man. And this is 10 p.m. You know what she said? He said, tell Pastor Ide it is me. <laughs> a single sister. A single sister. We are public product. I will preach a message to you next month on short series and I will call you good use but in good condition. <laughs> How do you 
get a spouse. Single, waking up in the morning, it's time to get married. The brothers are not coming, the sisters are not coming. You can follow different paths. You can go to pub, club. Uh -uh. Ah, it's a, it's a different way. I'll give you the option. You go to the African party that won't do till midnight. You know, uh, even if you, you can come to church or whatever. But the truth of the matter is that where you go is not the most important thing. It's who you meet. Are you with me? And I'm here to recognize who you meet. Hmm? It's just that when you go, attract the person that comes in. Are you with me? The fact that you meet somebody in the shop, shopping mall, does not mean that they are a bad person because they are different things they are selling there. Are you with me? So, where you meet is important, but that's not the most important to me. What's most important to me is the ability to recognize who you want. But most people, they understand how to address package, less understanding of the content. And as a result of that, they get the package, but they're suffering with the content. <coughs> pastoring for years of not even pastoring, having personal counseling with people, me and me and I, over a few years, I can tell you two basic ways as a kingdom person to get the best lady or to get me. If, my name is Papa I can prove this one. You can prove this one. I can prove this one. Go and study the book of Ruth and follow our pattern. Two things you must. Singles. Ah, you don't have enough here. Okay, let me just face this side. <laughs> Check the scripture. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. I intentionally want to go and do this so that we can help the singles among us. Is that okay? Yes. Then for those of us that are cancelled too, I know that many of you want to help us. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. Are you there? Yes, sir. Very common scripture. If you know, you know it. Enjoy life with a wife whom you love all the days of your futile life, which she has given you under the sun all the days of your futility. For this is what your reward or your portion in this life and in the work in which you have labored under the sun. Did you see that scripture? What that simply means is this. In this kingdom, even in our family background, when God wants to set up somebody for marriage, God uses it as a reward. Joyfully would have a good whom you love all the days of your entire life, but this is your portion, your reward in this life. So what you have <laughs> is what you paid for. Except you chose wrong. This is what God does. He looks at a man and he sees that you have lived for 30 years. And he said you want to get married. And he shows how you have lived for 30 years to predict what your behavior will be for the next 50 years. Then we hand over a woman that qualifies that future for you. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, That's how God was. Except he presented it to you and you said you don't want it. So what we advise young people is that once you discover life and you start preparing for future, lock yourself into service. Because that increases your what? In the spirit, not in the natural. You lost yourself. Some of us that we are privileged to have picked somebody. It was sad. And when we were serving, we were not serving because of system. But when God sees that, the kind of service we are doing, I want you to be peaceful with it into your future. I will give you somebody that will give you that peace. So, marriage is a reward system of God, so to say, for us. Are you listening to me? So, I tell people the first thing to do is that you must lock yourself into service. And I've tested it, not just in Nigeria, I've tested it in UK. The last, the church we passed on before we moved to Medway, this lady was just coming, at some point she was even the only single. You know, we are a lot of uh, uh, single as a pretend and all of that. But, you know, I'm a pastor, <laughs> you know, single. That's not where, it's not about where you go. It's about you just plug yourself into service. And I'm telling you, by the time God did it for her, the first shootout was twins. 
That's it. Lock yourself. You must do something or be busy with the kingdom in a way that God will be passing by and you say, oh, oh, you're doing this a lot for me. How can I make you better? Then he might not give you cash, he might not give you car. He decides to just package human being and give it to you. That's, it. That's why men like that, when they are testifying, they will say, my wife is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Once you call yourself into service and you keep doing it, then the second thing that God will do is what I call prophetic parts. That's what he has been prophetic part, in which God will lead you by circumstances to wear the bonus. So you cannot, might not meet in the conference and meet in the parking lot. Might not meet in the parking lot, you can meet in the train station. Yeah, in the train station. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Prophetic part. You just wake up one morning, you feel like going by to a meek. And you say, why well, meek? There's meek in free. You say, I feel like buying a skin one. <laughs> skin, the, 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 the green one, the skin one. And you just get there and say, hi, hi. And that's it. Prophetic part. The part of the righteous. No righteous. Hallelujah. that by the Lord. That's why I have confidence. This thing I've told you, I've tested and put the I I, if, I, if I pastor you and you understand these two things, you will. The, it is not written because this word of the Lord cannot be spoken. When Ruth was asking, trusting God to survive in Bethlehem, she was not thinking about marriage. She wasn't. She was just serving. The reason why some of you have not gotten is because you are serving God selfishly. You are, you are looking for something. You are trying to bribe God. God cannot be bribed. He sees the heart. You just pour yourself doing the right thing. You see someone by the one side, you take care of them. You, you greet your neighbor very well. You know, you volunteer, you do this. Just keep serving. Just pour yourself. This is how life is built. How life is built. And one day, it can be one year, it can be two years, it can be three years. God will say, have you found my servant Moses? Have you found, say, have you found him? What, what can we do to make her better? What can we do to make her keep doing this? Keep doing this. And I said, okay, I won't give you cash. So I will give you the package. Well, then, so I want to give you something that will stay with you and communicate with you. And then this fast. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That's how it works, so. That's how it works. Tell them, tell them. Okay, somebody is telling me, and I say, Oh, Pastor, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to get married. I want to share. I, what are you doing at the moment? What are you doing? What is your focus? If there's nothing, you just want a woman or you just want a man, you will get your time. Yeah, you get your time. The selfish will be selfish. The useless will be useless. The only painful thing is when a sister is serving God. And she's saying serving God, probably you will join a member and a brother, look man, walking like me. No, walking like Luke, and I just said you are the one. When I mean Luke, man, I'm not, it's not even religion. I'm talking about people that come selfishly. Then, yeah? useless life, looking for useful people. Hey. And they are coming to church, and there's no discernment for the people to the people. Hey. And now, he walks up to the people and says, Sister, so you are the one. They come in from outside to be the best inside. And the brother inside starts sleeping. Jesus, those are the things that is causing that attack for pastors. Yeah, causing that attack for pastors. And you know why that happens? I'm drilling this in. Are you still with me? Yes. Few more minutes. Yes. Let me tell you one thing about this thing called she's the right. Let me tell you. Singles listen to me. Even when I listen to me, everybody have tendency to love Jesus. Everybody have tendency to love and respect their parents. Everybody have tendency to even honor their pastors. But I can tell you this. Once you're emotional, you don't have respect for anybody again. Listen, listen, listen to me. Single, listen to me. Listen to me. In this journey of choice, once you become emotional, have you discovered that emotional people can hear the spirit very well? Ha! Ah, ah. You almost lost your job. You didn't receive divine guidance. Then you met a sister, you saw several calabash. How? 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 Tell me how. How? Because emotions can generate revelation. Well painted. Well painted. So I slept, I saw her handkerchief was on my head. <laughs> and I woke up, he talked to her scarf. So it was Fake. 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 So once you're telling me that you're in love, you are not asking for counseling again. You are asking for permission. I'm telling you, I know. Once you are emotional, 
What's emotional? We can't. Uh, and you know the challenge we are facing now as a pastor, we're becoming more mature. Because before, when you are wrong, we tell you you're wrong. But now, we are married people that are wrong and we are ambitious. But you will not know. Yay. Yes, that's what we're doing now. That's what we're doing now. We're doing now. We'll just be sending lubricant to your house from a distance after you are married. Yeah, because so, because, you know. <laughs> As a Christian, I had to make this up. Ah! He told me. He said, somebody came, somebody came to him and said, and said, this is best of man. And he said, he knows under God that it was the wrong one. Then the next thing is that under God, he said, God said, the Lord, this is a wrong connection. You know what they said to him next? He said, we just want to inform you that this is the date we're going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so if we put somebody at that level, it's passing. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Once I call you and I said, who is this person? So oh, this is what the Lord told me to. I said, have you checked this? Said, we've checked it. Because when you're emotional, you have an explanation for all the questions. You see the red flag, like you build thesis on it. You see red flag like this, that is supposed to just pack your load down. You build thesis, you know what I mean by thesis? Five chapters on it, with all your content at home. You know, I can play on it, on them. No, because you have everything, because emotions are ready in it. So what we do is that we bless it. They will be sending lubricant to you in distance. That the Lord will keep what he has started with. You believe God has said that? Yeah? You believe God has said that? Yeah? You believe God has said that? You don't 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 believe God has said that? So, let me check my notes over here. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Are you are you getting blessed so far? Yes, Come on now. Yes, Come on now. Yes, so let me give you singles, what we call elite monsters. Elite monsters. That you want to be sure that this is the right person, whether you have feelings for him or not. It's not a, it's not everybody you have feelings for that should be your most popular. Even after you are married, won't you still have feelings for people? Oh, you don't know, I will still get there one day. How to handle your feelings with somebody you are not married to? The least most test of getting a right to marry that time is that anybody that is not in support of your assignment is the wrong person to marry. You might get every other thing wrong, but this one is the. Is the, is the is a deep breaker. If, but the question is that do you even know your assignment? That's what becomes. One minute, one minute. I will, I will get into that. Anybody, any relationship that will not advance your calling, I'm not using calling specifically because my, most of them I don't understand. Advance your calling does not advance your um, 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 potential concern that you advance your assignment is it automatically a wrong person to be married to. There's an old philosopher, I think he has, he's died, his name is Disraeli. Disraeli decided to get married, not because of emotions or anything. He said, I just need a lady that can help me to advance my business. And he found a lady that can do that. They got married. Not because they want to have children, they don't even think they are children. But the marriage is survived. I am telling you the natural order. That once there is, you know where you're going, and she knows where they are going, and the two of them are going to the same place. Are you with me? Yes, I can tell you you're choosing right. Yes, then I remember many years ago, that was about 20 years ago, when I met this lady and I said she's the one, and I told my pastor, Victor Calde, and Father Victor Calde did not ask me any question. She just said, she just said to me, bring Lydie to me. Then Lydie stood before him, and they asked him one question. I know the question, are you ready to follow this man to ministry? And Lydie said yes. He said, Dipo, she's the one. It took me years to understand that jam questions are not easy. What's the question? Um, what if the person <laughs> actually pretends to support, you know, you like the lady or the lady likes you? So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to support you, you know, like your pastor asked us about it. And she says yes, but now you guys are married. I said, well, that time your pastor was asking me, I didn't care, I'm not ready to do ministry with you now. And that's what I'm saying. They're still back up. But they are married now. They're married now. Now, where they are now, or what the future is, I cannot give a general answer to it. It's a case to case basis. 
but where he missed it, he see the power of righteousness. And that leads me to the next question that I want to do to singles, which is always my formula. That every time you want to make the right choice, you do not leave it to the choice of one, including you. You are not strong enough to choose it right when it comes to maritalism. Alone. You know why? Because the world we live is a wicked world. In, now, in the days of mommy, in those days, our uh, parents, you know, if one believer, who can't believe her, they still marry and marry right. Hmm? And they still stay there. But these days, the older the world is, the more wicked it is. It's getting terrible now. As in terrible now, that if the salmon, you know, that's one of the this year. If the salmon is not sharp, that's why I said, look, man, we just come to look. Then when you finish marriage, I say, if you say I'm Luke, man, and I want to marry you, if you can convince me, why not? But why will you come like look as a spiritual brother, you know, you know, and it, you, today do you even know who is speaking in tongues that is fake and is right? Ah, you can cram two sentences now. No, anybody can lead that in church now. Oh, you don't understand. In those days, a man from the house of Levi will meet a man from the house of Levi and say, You are Levite and Levi, do your life right. But today, you can't even trust pastor because you don't know which way it's right. Oh, you think everybody that is preaching on the movie that is. Even Pastor Adeboe is giving plenty. Even Pastor Adeboe is giving plenty. Probably is fake. He has to put. Come on. Even if you meet a, a fake pastor, how will you know? Because some of you will think I'm fake. No, not you. I, I, I will give you a message next month. Hey, let's make, about these challenges that pastors are facing these days. Well, how do you know he's a fake pastor? Ability to preach is not what makes you a pastor. The difference between anointing and public speaking is still like. Yes, sir. True, true. We are life changers. That's what we do. So if you come to me and I preach to you with an open hand, and it does not shift you, and you don't know I'm monitoring you. I'm monitoring you in the spirit and in the flesh. I'm monitoring you. The goal of pastor is to change life. Change life. All this one I've told you now, if somebody brings me, comes to me for counseling, I'll, and I'll just say, go on, I can't say. And I'm listening whether the same thing I've told you, you can replicate it. Will I tell you this now? And if friend you want to get married now, and they ask you for your advice, and you will say, go boom, go boom, go boom. <laughs> See that we can just say, people. Emotions. On campus in all days, I met it. When the lady is feeling down like this, worship God, we think, ah, she's the one. Ah, the one. Then, ah, man, God, before two sons, water is already coming up. He ended up getting engaged to a court guy. Court guy! With that thing. That's when I discovered that. The emotions. Once we enter emotional zone, I'm telling you now, if you come to me for counseling, and I say, how is that? The way you even be running your mouth, oh, it's a nice guy. I know that I go to Jofre. I said, you are grand You are grand You are grand You are grand and you are saying, Pastor, what is your opinion? What is my opinion? <laughs> when you have signed the paper, what is my opinion? What is my opinion? And now, if I don't show up and I don't show care, he says, Pastor doesn't care. He doesn't want me to get married. That's what we face. I want to get married. Let me conclude. Your question is distracted. <laughs> Lord, show this. Are you blessed today? Yeah. Your shh, shh, your emotions. Or your person is not enough to make final decision as to who to marry. You know why? Because when people get married, it's not two people, it's two families. Every error you make maritally is generational and initial. Yes, sir. Every word, error you make maritally is generational and initial. That's number one. Number two, even when you try to recover, which some of us are passing through, and I've seen people that pass through. As I'm talking to you now, I have about five cases on my table of people that are between separation and remarriage. About five people, practical, personal issue. And, and what I'm trying to do with them is number one, why is God putting me in the midst of this? Why am I attracted to the Lord? Number two, what is God trying to learn? Then I'm choosing it to even learn from them. And this is what I've discovered. The everything is that you are making a wrong choice. Is that when you begin to face the family challenge, you must be ready to pay sacrifice. It's an evidence you have to, for you, because it's a demonic attack to make sure that I destroy, I distract your life, or at least I destroy it. Then you have to put it and say, God, what does it take to recover? 
And then God says, if you focus on me, I will cause you to recover. Focus on him and you will recover. That, that's why I, that, I, can't, I can't blame any woman, any man that having marital challenges. Especially because they make the wrong choice. Because you can have the right heart and make the wrong choice. Come on, are you, are you still tracking with me? Thank God we are not recording this, so you give me liberty to talk. Are you, are, you, are you with me? I see innocent ladies with a stupid man, with a stupid man. And I don't think that. It's because her heart is right, but her choice is wrong. And you know why her choice is wrong? It's because she wants to make decisions alone on a matter that you cannot have capacity. So we now develop a formula. I say there are four people or four segments of relationship in your life. Then if you are not accountable to the four of them, there is that tendency you will always make it wrong. Not only in marital issues, every matter, every matter, you will always get it wrong. That's wrong. But I would say the multitude of cancer. So who are the cancer? Companies are bought trust uh, ministry as trustees. Companies are board of directors. You. Board of self. Board of self. Thank you. Board of self. So it's, my, it's my life. Who told you? When your children begin to suffer, it's your life. When your mom and dad is interceding for you, Lord, show me, it's your life. The reproach will cause a generation. It's your life. You must have board of counselors. No, no, but one person in that board is you. Because you are the one that appointed the board. <laughs> it's you. It's you. No, but two persons in that board is God Himself. Ability to hear God is the critical in every decision you make, including your marital life. And when you come to His influential, our goal is to preach the word of God to you so that the vows of the Spirit can open. Then when you sleep or when you pray, it can be easier for you to preach the vows of the Spirit. Because I hear God. Did you hear me? I said that what? I hear God. How many of you have not had God for? Since we've been part of this influential church, I have God. I've had God. For, I have had God. Probably I've just met Ayo for the first time. I've never even taken time to pray for her before. I've had God. That you have a future. And I hope she will help you. Yeah, if you keep it simple, you'll be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's money in your future. I'm telling you. I have, I have God. Have I not heard God for you? Have I? Come on now. Come on now. Even this week, even my tiredness and busyness, I still see in the realm of the Spirit. The job of oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when we say somebody is a man of God, man of God, it's because of his capacity to hear God. To hear God. Oh God. What I appreciate to you today, I got the conclusion this morning that this is the plan. Because I have God. And we are not ashamed of our calling. Whether it is one or one million, we are not ashamed of our calling. This thing I told you now, present it to any man of God, even of the location and capacity. If they pick the same vibe from the Spirit, they will confirm it. We have a from God. So you, you set a board of God to steal. You are the number one. And you are the first decision and the final decision. Because if you take God as final decision, you can reject God's decision. So, so first of all, know that I'm the one. Everything ends up here. Then you pick God number one, you pick your parent because you came into this cycle. Even if you're, listen, if your mother or your father is a witchcraft, okay, for instance, the father at the time you want to get married, they've not killed you yet, is a sign that it's not part of the plan. Hmm? So you must. <laughs> if your mom does not speak in tongues or they don't understand some dimension of God, then you want to make who to marry. And you are asking your mom, hey, Mom, this is your mom. And you are saying, The Bible says, The Bible says, A woman that can't speak in tongues or doesn't even know scripture. The woman will just choose a high of nine months pregnancy of you. See how they go you to you because all your friends, she will just say, mm. That mm, is a thesis. If you don't deduce it and you still go ahead, you have no you put a parent, your parents in the, in, in, in the committee. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Then, you, in your life before you got married, you now met a few of our friends. All of them might be good, but one is the best. And now you know the best is somebody, number one, number one, that cares about you and not what you have. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Number two are the people around you, the friends around you that you know that are selfless. They're selfless. That when you call, hey, Joe, can you come in? Hey, can you come in? They're dead. Are you with me? Then, the most important quality of friends is somebody that can hear God for you when you can't hear it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Because any time God wants to correct you and you are not available because you're emotional, he's looking for who is the closest to you that can hear the sign of the Spirit. So that kind of person, you put them in the committee. Then the final one, which you don't like, is that you ask the pastor. I didn't say the person that preached to you. I just said the person that preached on YouTube. Your pastor. The question that do you have a pastor? A pastor is not the person that is on the pulpit in the church you attend. Because you can be in the church for five years and that person preaching to you is not yet your pastor. Your pastor is somebody that heaven has connected together. When you meet your pastor, you will know. You will know. Won't you know? Well, pastor, you will know. You will know. I know my pastors. <laughs> no. No, I'm not talking about a pastor that. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So people will call me. I, by the way, I'm privileged to be pastoring people as long as 50, 70 years. I, I, as in, that's one of the greatest blessings of God over my life. That you see how people connected to my Lord by the help of the Spirit for that number of years. In which when we pick phone and we talk, you will know that this is spirit connection. This is spirit connection. This is spirit connection. Those are the people you put in the group. Put in the group. Paul, is it broken one time to ask me for something like one or two weeks ago, uh, the last week ago. And our concern is, what is Peter going to say about it? <laughs> but one month before, I picked it. I picked it, but I kept quiet. If it's before, I would have just said, just say the Lord, this is what the Lord said. But I've gone to a level in maturity now that when you want to make a decision, I leave it to your choice. In fact, if they have told me and I didn't agree with them, I would have agreed to what they want. I kept my own decision with that. But you just came and just said, this is I said, okay, that's fine. And she was excited about it. You know why it happened? It's because the connection. God, Jesus Christ. God. What came to me is that, do, do you know, let me tell you something. Do you think he's only here with it? <laughs> no, this is not the meeting place. We meet in the spirit too. You know? Ah, we meet. We meet. We meet. You know how many men of God have met over there? Yeah, we are. Look, I have two, two friends. I said, look, this one that you are running after men, running after men, taking pictures with them. He said, when I want to meet a man, I know how to meet them. If we belong to the same tribe, we come by meeting. The meeting we can't do, we will do it there. The land of us will call our Jesus, right? We can't do, we do it there. We do it there. We do it there. This is where we do it. That place is more weird than this place. This is more weird than this place. We meet, we meet. I see some of you. I see some of you. I see some of you. And I call them and I say, how are you doing? You better start talking. <laughs> <laughs> some are even so quick now. When I say, oh, I'm just thinking about you, they're just saying, they just say, what is the loss? What is it? They, they understand the signature. What is the signature? The daughter of mine was in a relationship for nine years, as I conclude. Nine years. And for nine years, I told her that's not the right guy. So how do you expect us to feel as a pastor? That somebody is in a relationship for nine years, and I say, this is not the person. And for nine years, the brother will not put a ring on it. And the day the, you don't know what we're facing, and the day the brother will want to dare to do something further about it, he decided to go and marry them behind. Or let the certificate for the purpose of traveling out. And I said, will you travel out to follow this guy? To follow this guy when he has not paid his dues? The fact that we're a Christian or pastor does not mean you know or not the best. So for the book, I said, behind you, I said, can't walk. They can't walk. So I said to her, I said, now, after nine years, after, in the name of Jesus, I can't, can't so break this relationship. And it broke. It broke. And the pain that is, that is going to recover after nine years of devotion, emotional devotion to my relationship. Nine years. It's got nothing to do with this lady I'm talking about, she's so gifted. She can do business, she can do it, she can cook well, she can play sax, she's a lawyer at master's level. Yet, emotionally bankrupt with decision. So, so you can you can talk you can do like this, you can you can do like this. Once we enter the emotional zone without any committee of cancer, you will still enter into the same gym. So last week Monday, as I woke up and I wanted to have an appointment, you know, I just had a strong feeling in my heart. Cancel the appointment to call people. So I canceled the appointment in bed, and the first person I will call is this lady. Hey, how are you doing? And she's at work. She, 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 she created her talk with her. That was the first time the Holy Ghost just inspired 
that conversation, and there was a double from him about the picture of the man. Is no man. And I said, don't do that to people, to give you prophetic words. Even what I see, I will not tell you, because this is a journey of faith. I advise, I don't command when it comes to that life. I'm not going to leave with you when you came out. Will I? But by the help of the Spirit that day, Monday, I can't forget, there was a download while we are talking by the Spirit on the phone. And I said, this is the nation. That is the nation of the man that God is bringing over. And when he comes, three things he will see. One, two, three. And she confirmed that she has written that thing about three, four months ago. I said, go and fast and pray, because the guy's coming. If the guy comes, when I see him, I will recognize him. Because I've seen him in the spirit. And I can go and say that way, I have to be part of it. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm just trying to tell you that even when you have missed it, when you have missed it, the people that in your committee of cancer are the people that will stick with you. Yes, sir. True. To bring you out of that house. How many of you finally have seen about the woman called Kate Kuma before? Yes. Uh, I know it's Kate Kuma. I don't think there's a replica for it. The only person in the body of Grand Rabbit that picked something close to it was uh, Benny. I know when we, 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 we can't compare, we don't have capacity to compare anointing. Definitely. But when Kate Kuma is in the stadium preaching, everywhere will be so silent as a pin of drop, you can hear it. That anointing was strong. As in strong. The woman that would be in God's prayer for two weeks, three weeks, without seeing anybody in fasting and prayer. That when she wants to get into the stage, she will sneak in, even through the, through the kitchen, and everybody will fall down. The power of God was strong in her life. She still married a wrong person. <laughs> she still married what? A wrong person. In fact, on the wedding day, on the wedding day, you know, you know she, she wanted to exchange the vow. The Spirit of the Lord came upon her and said, This is not. She collapsed there. They, rest, rest, they, they resuscitate her and pour her down. She still collects her. Yeah, with all those anointing. Yeah. And the only, only thing that rescued her, the only thing that rescued her, is that the closest friends of her life, who don't care how much anointing she has, that can tell her you're wrong, by the people that stood. I said, Look, you can make this decision, but we will not support it. And on that day, when she was collecting her, she looked around, she did not find her. God, they, they came to the city, but they didn't join the wedding. So when she collected the ring, he told the husband, he said, I will not follow you to the hotel. I am going to go and meet her friend. And that's how that marriage was cancelled. Because the judge discovered that that same man has a wife and two children somewhere else. Ah, God. Ah. Let's rest our feet. And this walk, it will work. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your grace and your grace today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you because you're going to keep us and you're going to guide us. We thank you because you're going to straighten us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone will get it right. Amen. It will work. Our families will work. Amen. Our families will work. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Everyone that is struggling by a batch of any form of issues in your life, I bring divine guidance and help. The Lord will straighten and uphold you. You will do well, you will do better. In the name of Jesus Christ, every family in the simple of the Lord will keep us and protect us and bless every single and heal us of every pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, most precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'm very, very sorry. I preach only for one hour. I'm so surprised that this went so, wow, amazing. It's almost one. Praise God. Let's take our offer and let's close this out.